What's going on, y'all? This your boy Teddy B. Blackman, and um, I'm just coming to y'all, telling y'all to make your own podcast using the Anchor FM app. Now with Spotify, it's free. They got a bunch of creation tools to record your podcast right from your phone or computer. They'll distribute your podcast for you on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so, so many more. You can make money from the podcast without having a minimum of subscribers or listeners. And it's everything you need to make in the podcast all in one setting in place. I've been doing this for a few years now. I know I've been inconsistent, at least on here, but I'm back now. And um, yeah, this is all I wanted to say to y'all. Use this Anchor FM app to make your own podcast. It's the most convenient app that you can use. Teddy B. Blackman, signing out. Yellow? Yeah. Yeah, my bad. So the the power did cut off again. And so I lost connection because I was on the Wi Fi. So I'ma run it I'ma run it off the Wi Fi or whatever. All so right. so even even if it just keeps the power keeps jumping back and forth, it shouldn't be effective, I don't think. But um you can still hear me you can still hear me good, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so we're gonna I'm gonna just skip all the the power out this talk this time around. <laughs> and um I can start over with the with the military operations that's going on right now. All right. All right. So basically, um Russia's invading Ukraine and they're attacking like the the country's capital, the Washington DC of Ukraine. That's what they're attacking. And um Basically, the the backstory, long story short, is Ukraine used to be a part of Russia, and they fought against Russia to get their own independence, a lot like America did with Great Britain back in the day. And so um, over on this side, uh, we all know that America is a part of the United Nations and whatnot, which is called NATO. It's a North Atlantic treaty organization so it's an umbrella in which a bunch of countries are under this umbrella they um they work together they stay on the same page about things you know like war etc etc which includes like united states the united kingdom germany spain canada you know netherlands poland like a bunch bunch of countries It's, it's at least like 32 so the problem comes in that Ukraine wants to join the NATO. Oh. So when Russia got wind that Ukraine wanted to join the NATO and the NATO was going to agree to let them join, Russia, you know, led by Vladimir Putin, is saying that they went through all of that to become independent just to go join another group. No, we want our we want our country back. We want our land back. Uh-huh. So that's what we're seeing right now. It's an insurgence to reclaim what he feel is should automatically be theirs if they're going to decide to join any group or organization. They'll re- they're going to come back to Russia. And um, he's saying that if anybody intervenes with what's going on, there will be consequences like no other. So this morning he did like, I guess, a fake little press conference or something over there. And he was saying that. They have multiple um, nuclear weaponries at their disposal. So he's really threatening right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he really, he really is trying to get Ukraine back. Um, so that this is where all the the World War Three is trending because you have your your Joe Biden making statements saying that everybody's going to come together against Russia and hold Russia accountable for what they feel is an unjustified attack. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah, I did see that part. That was right. like wondering what the fuck is going on, but you broke it down so great. Okay, appreciate that. So yeah, that's that's basically where we're at with it, and you know, hour by hour, we're feel we're filling that with more details and whatnot. 
man, but it's looking like this this could potentially be the start of a world war, man. How you feeling about this? Uh, I'm not feeling good, man. You know, as as a civilian and shit. Uh, but I say, I uh, could be wrong. But I say, I, have, I don't know, man. Like, I always be, like, worried about shit like this. Like, man, you know, you're just going about your regular day and then fucking some type of nuclear attack or some bomb against her shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really feeling this shit, man. Mm-hmm. And, and just to put things in, like, to perspective, they have videos of uh, people in Ukraine and that uh, city. Like you said, it's like the Washington, D.C. of the city. So it's pretty active and all of that. And the highways are like extremely filled up with traffic. People trying to escape. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You got large groups of people like out in the field praying and crying. Um, soldiers uh, sending out videos from their phones saying that, you know, they're super super duper outnumbered and they're telling that their parents that they love them and all of that you know what i mean yeah that's sad man. yeah so it's it's really and, and it's all just like for what though you know what i'm saying yeah like you feel something is yours even though technically it's not right and you know, Russia they're basically trying to bully their way into getting back what they lost rather than it going to join something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So ho- hopefully this could be solved with minimum lives lost, even though lives have already been lost. Hope it's not like because if it's a world war then that's going to be millions of people eventually. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I'm about to say, I don't know how accurate it is. Probably definitely not um, what it is now. I heard like at least 40 casualties over there in Ukraine. Right. At least, you know what I'm saying? And who knows how long ago that report was reported when I saw it. Like I said, the numbers could definitely be still be rising. And like hopefully, like you said, um, <clears throat> hopefully this gets resolved quickly and with less casualties as possible. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. So that just just to touch bases on that serious situation, and then we could um slide into our regular topics that we was going to discuss. Discuss. So you want to lead us in with the um the Meg the Stallion and Tory Lanes and Big Act. Oh man, the, the, the <laughs> never never ending saga it seems. It's been going on for like at least three years now. Yeah. Two or three years now with Meg and, and Tori, the whole uh, who shot you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um if, if you've been under a rock for the last three years, you know what I'm saying? It was an incident that happened outside of like Kylie Jenner's place or residence or something like that. Mm-hmm. Where it's been alleged that Tory shot Megan Thee Stallion, who we're kind of talking at the time. I don't know if that, nothing was official, but you know, um, first she tried to cover and say she stepped in glass, and then I guess whatever happened, it's been a whole bunch of stories and theories out there. Eventually, she came to it and said. He shot me multiple times. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Each time, each year, she's getting bolder, bolder. Saying, but now, like, she's like, motherfucker, you shot me. Admit to it and shit. Mm-hmm. And so where we're at today is, you know what I'm saying, it's getting closer and closer, even while it keep, the case keeps getting postponed. It got postponed again until, like, April, I think. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, Ak, you know, he's a, a blogger, a media person. He got a wind of some court records and Tory's defense is saying it was no evidence of DNA on the weapon or magazine that was allegedly used to shoot Megan Thee Stallion. So he kind of reported that prematurely is what Megan was saying. And, and she was saying, Oh, we haven't even started that yet. And how do you get this? And that whole spawned the whole thing, you know. I act as volatile, especially when it comes to the women. So he's like going on her. I think he kind of already had like some type of beef with her already. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so he's going on her about saying that she only got like all these awards because of sympathy because she got shot and all this other shit. And and Meg is like lashing out. 
calling him like a fat boy and all that shit and <laughs> fake media and shit like that and Tori is, you know what I'm saying, proclaiming his innocence, saying like, you know what I'm saying, uh, basically, because I think she tried to say, oh, why you apologize then? And he was saying, basically, I just apologize for basically effing the two friends, Meg and her friend. Yeah, I seen that. That was, that was a, that was, you know, if this was wrestling, that's one of the crazy rebuttals we might have ever seen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, yeah. you know, party, uh, Meg's boyfriend or lover is chiming in, wants to meet up with, with Tori. Tori, like, man, you already seen me a few times. Calm down. And mm-hmm. it's just like a whirlwind with, like, extra people coming into it because I believe, uh, I think when Act was addressing Meg, he kind of took a shot at the Tasha K chick who was involved with Cardi. Right, right, so right. So she took a shot at acts like Tomas, like stop playing with me. All these girls in my DMs talking about you drugged and raped them and shit. So that shit is getting messy. And then uh, who else is involved? I think it's still swirling around um, about uh, Meg's um, old. Uh, well, I think she still kind of te- technically signed him. Um, I think his dude name is Carl or whatever. He's like kind of linked with Jay Prince. Mm-hmm. So that's getting volatile because I think like Meg is like basically that's what Ak was saying like Meg got like got a bag to put out music and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because like <laughs> she signed to a label, she signed to a person. You know what I'm saying? Signed to the group and all that shit. So she got so many clearances and shit. Right. And they've been going through like court cases too because you know what I'm saying you know how that shit go. He found Meg. Brought her to, I guess, a bigger situation. Now she's like super paid. Now she's trying to like cut out the middleman because you know what I'm saying she want more money, right? But you can't can't really do that like that. You know what I'm saying? Can't do bad business like that. Mm-hmm. So like, you know what I'm saying? So he been fighting like, oh nah, you gotta get it cleared by me to put out music and all that shit. So it's been just a cluster fuck of shit going on with this Meg the Stallion and Tory Lane's case, man. I'm just kind of ready to see it at least get started and get underway because I'm like, it's like the biggest fucking. Cliffhanger we didn't have for like the longest time, bro. <laughs> I was like, did he or did he not shoot her? <laughs> right. And How do you feel, bro? It, it, it's just like, and we had, remember, we had, well, we've been having every time something new makes this topic hot again. And it's just like, I feel like the longer it goes on, it's just the more and more I'm starting to think, like, he didn't do it. Okay. And like I like I like we, I was saying the other day when we was talking about this, and it was like, I love Megan Thee Stallion, but it's like, yo, if she if she really lied about this, and she the way she's like going hard about it, then yo something's wrong. Yeah, it's something wrong. Yeah, and I would <laughs> like to see. I would like to see what happens to her. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that I want something to happen to her, but I just be. You know I me, mean? I like like the study shit like this. Like, so I just want to see how the media and so forth and so forth will act, how it will treat her. You know what I'm saying? Because she's still going to have a regular, regular career. Will she get quote unquote canceled? You know what I'm saying? Nah. With all the women feminists have to say about this shit. You know what I'm saying? She definitely would be cutting it super close to cancellation. Yeah, I would think so, but it's like I wouldn't be surprised if like right this shit would just go on, just how, like any other female like accuse a man of some shit, and nothing happens to the female. You know what I'm saying? Pretty right. much. And then right. Tori's gonna be scarred for life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He still, even if he proved his innocence, oh, you still shot that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and that, and we <laughs> seen that with with plenty of um court cases and whatnot. Oh, I I just one. I just want this to be over. Yeah. Damn it! If he did it, he did it. If he didn't, he didn't. God damn it! You know what I'm saying? Um, but we all know that when it comes to court, it's about what you can prove, right? So that's a huge thing that's going to be in his favor if if that report is true about you know, none of his DNA being on the gun in the, in the magazine. Mm-hmm. If you don't have any like character witnesses or any video of people saying he shot her or video showing that he did it I really don't see how you can be proven guilty right you know what I'm saying yeah that's gonna be tough like 
Cause like I don't, how do you explain the no DNA being on the weapon and shit? Like it was like the middle of the summer or some shit, right? So nigga ain't got no gloves and the shit on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was yeah. like a spontaneous thing. What like you know what I'm saying? So how the fuck do you explain that? Unless it was tampered with or some shit, I don't know. Like that, yeah, that, or, like you said, that's gonna be just, interesting. Or it just just didn't happen, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it, it's, it's been real interesting to see this play out. Hopefully, it doesn't just keep getting pushed back. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. I, I'm I'm still on the fence about it. I'm gonna keep an open open mind either way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all I ask. You know what I'm saying? For, in situations like this and shit, I know it's like it's so hard. You know what I'm saying? Not not the two sides. Get involved, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Definitely want to protect black women, protect people in general. You always want to. You know what I'm saying? Protect your innocence too. It, just in case if Tory is actually innocent. You know what I'm right, saying? So it's right. like that's why people just need to just chill, hear the facts of the case, and then, you know what I'm saying, make a decision from there and shit. <clears throat> facts. Facts. Um so I, I did have like a screenshot I didn't get a chance to write down on the list that that we can kind of segue into since we're talking about like court and stuff. And that was okay. The, I got um, one after you. Okay, that was the uh, Y and W Melly situation. Okay, so um, we all know he's been locked up for been a couple years now, right? A few years. Yeah, yeah. So he's been locked up for a few years now. Um, the murder on my mind rapper who is accused of killing two of his own group mates, and um, the breaking news on this was. They have 65 pages, 64, 65 pages of new evidence, which boils down to the prosecution being 99.9% sure YNW Melly is the person that executed these murders. Um, the One of the pages included like some ballistic tests that came back mm-hmm. which uh, exposed that the fatal shots to both members came from within inside the car from what would appear to be the driving seat of the vehicle um, and at the time YNW Melly was the person that was driving you know what I'm saying Okay. so that was just one of the pages, and they said they have like six, at least sixty more of of evidence that points that this guy murdered his peoples and rode around for hours with the deceased bodies, took them to like an abandoned place or something, where he shot the car up and tried to make it seem like it was a drive by. Um said he when he shot the car up he did use the the same I guess they must have found a gun from him or something. And it was the same bullets that were in them and you know had shot up the car. But the gun was his or something or something close to him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he didn't it ain't like he just used a a, a random gun and then tossed it. He used like something that was that could be linked back to him. Mm-hmm. So it's looking like this is pretty much going to be a formality at this point and this guy isn't going to come home. Talented, talented dude, but it looks to be over for all intents and purposes. How you feel about that? Yeah, man. Super, super unfortunate, man. Like, I don't know. It was like, that's is sick, though. Like, well, I don't know. What the fucking going is you can kill your fucking friends and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, mm-hmm. like I said, that, like they say that in Florida, man, shit is crazy, and I definitely heard about that shit too. Like you say, you broke down everything I heard and shit. Yeah, nah. it's like so much evidence pointing to <laughs> him. You know what I'm saying? The shots came from where he was sitting. You know what I'm saying? The bullets are placed back to him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even though they tried to cover it up by a drive-by, it was the same weapon that was used to kill the <laughs> gentleman. Like, like what the fuck do people be thinking, bro? It's like, <laughs> like it's 2022, bro. Like, like you know that they can trace all this stuff back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nick, niggas are still trying to execute stuff like this, like, the early 90s or something. Yeah. Like, like if you, like, I don't know, like, it, it seems like now, like, 2022 and 21, whatever, you know what I'm saying? 
you should be able to like look at past cases and see what the fuck niggas went wrong, and you should be better. But it's like it's like it's like yo, I'm glad they didn't, so they can get caught because these motherfuckers are stupid as shit doing dumb shit like this. Yeah, and and then the reason allegedly was that the two members of the group were either extorting or trying to set up his mother or something like that. Oh yeah, I do remember yeah back in like yeah. when I first heard about the trial was something to do with his mom and shit. Right, right. So whether that warrants you killing them, it had to be. I mean, I don't know. Like you said, this Florida rappers, these the street the street rappers now are just like totally different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you don't need a solid reason to like want to kill somebody. Right. So you can go ahead and segue into yours. I just wanted to get an update on that one. Oh yeah, just a small little tidbit. Uh, you remember the clown Cal Rittenhouse, whatever? Yeah. So apparently, he's putting together a um a program, a media accountability program, which I guess is going to be like some type of uh, you know, take donations, where like he's going to be going after everybody who said something bad about him, called him a racist, white supremacist, a killer, and all that shit. Okay. And he named like superstars and ball players. He name dropped Whitney Houston. And it was some white um, musician. You said Whitney Houston? I mean, I must say, Whoopi Goldberg, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> Whoopi <yeah>. Goldberg, excuse <laughs> me. Oh, what the hell is they about Whitney Houston? <laughs> but yeah, Whoopi Goldberg says so he's going to be going after her, you know what I'm saying, and a whole bunch of other people and shit like that. I'm like, this guy is fucking sad, bro. Oh, yeah, because didn't he say, like, LeBron? He didn't say his name in this report, but he said sports players and that's the first person I thought of and shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I know LeBron definitely said something about him and shit like that. So yeah, he's probably gonna be trying to like fund up and come after these people, whatever. He was on Fox News talking to Tucker Carlson about this shit or whatever. <laughs> Tucker Carlson, mm, so lame. But um yeah this this is this is interesting to keep an eye on. Let's see like what kind of traction he can get. Yeah, you know, or you know, that's why, like, I'm like keeping a close eye on like you said. It's like, them white people, they support these people like him, like him and George Zimmerman. Uh, and shit, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely to see how, for, for, how 48, 48 hours, he done made five million dollars already, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's one thing I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. One thing I am envious about white people, besides like all the money and the power and all that. Is like they stick together, bro. Yeah, good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> yeah, like and that that whether you right or wrong, if you got like a strong support system, it's gonna be hard to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so that's one thing I do like commemorate them on. Like, they stick together, but uh, he's definitely a clown, bro. Like it, it's not like you went to trial. And you was just like innocent. Like, you did kill those people. You know what I'm saying? Right. You would just award it an excuse to get away with it. Right. That's all that is. I don't, I don't under like you got to be like super un not unconscious, but like have no conscious at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what like rubs me the wrong way, among other things. But that's the mm-hmm. shit that like really grinds my gears and shit. Mm-hmm. Like with him and Zimmerman, like people who knew they was fucking guilty. And they got away with it, but now they just keep like reminding us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, not doing dumb shit like Zimmerman was like selling the gun and all that shit in the auctions and shit like that. And they just clown, yeah, signing shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talking hella shit on social media and all this shit. Somebody want box breaking and all this other shit. Mm-hmm. And we'll see what this fucking clown Cal Rittenhouse is up to. Man, this is the latest. Bullshit with this whole media program shit. Mm-hmm. So definitely uh definitely just gonna keep an eye on this one. That's a good tidbit right there. Um I'm I'm gonna segue into the uh the Summer Walker situation. Okay. So, um, Summer Walker is making headlines again for some what of a a wrong reason. So, Summer Walker, I believe, is on tour, right? Mm-hmm. And so, 
one of her hit songs, I forget the name of it, and I stupid ass cropped it out of the screenshot because it was like at the bottom or whatever. And it's a hit song that references like to her failed relationship with um London on the track. Is that his name correct? Yeah. Yeah. So uh it, it the the song has made like a bunch of streaming little records and platforms and such and such. But she refuses to perform that song because of the trauma that it brings her. But fans were requesting that she perform song at said show. So when she refused to perform said song, a lot of fans started booing and requesting refunds. And, and it's an interesting, and I, that's what I definitely want your opinion. It's an interesting gray area, right? Because as a business, you're an artist, but and as a consumer, you want to hear the artist's music. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to something that's so like emotional and you know this is this is real music to her, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, should she be I and I know we, we rag on Summer Walker all the time for all the other BS that she be pulling off, but should she be like granted some type of leniency here? Like I feel like she should technically. Mm-hmm. I know it's a business and I don't give like what you're going through. We want to hear this song perform that shit. You know, especially if you pay like top dollar for the tickets and all of that stuff. But I feel like if it's going to open up a wound or cut kind of deep or something and, and make her relive some traumas, I kind of feel like, hey, well, you know, the next time around, let her perform it. She's good this time. What you think? Yeah, uh, like you said, um, I kind of I feel both sides, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, I wouldn't be mad. We, if even if I was a fan, I paid. You know what I'm saying? Tickets to go see her. If if I do that, I'm a fan of Summer Walker. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, I'm not gonna be mad at maybe missing one or two songs. You know what I'm saying? Especially for that reason and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you know what I'm saying? Now with this whole mental health and all that shit, I'm more. You know what I'm saying, lenient for shit like that. So I will understand this shit, but I mean, I I guess I can't be mad at some fans, but I definitely more so understand the side with her and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like she said, she writes her music herself. That's her personal shit. You know what I'm saying? She right. probably don't want to relive that shit right now. Like you said, the shit is just is soon and shit. Like you're saying, like she's saying, like references some of the songs about uh, London and her kid and all that shit. You know what right. I'm saying? So right. it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going. I wouldn't want to put her through that shit. You know what I'm saying? Especially if I paid use, pay my money to see her and I, I'm really invested into this person. You know what I'm saying? That's how I do. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't I wouldn't be that mad over a couple songs. You know what I'm saying? Right. If I do that, I'm investing into this person's catalog. So just give me some more hits. She got a lot right. of hits. Definitely got a lot of hits. Yep. Beat cuts and shit like that. If you're invested or as a fan that you want to hear perform. I know it sucks. You know what I'm saying? But like I don't know, think fans. Of, fans are like so entitled these days, bro. Yeah, fans. You got to think about the the big picture because if you make her relive these traumas, and then she go off and kill herself or something, now right. it's no more. It's no more summer walker. Period. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you know, like you said. I know we feel entitled. It, it's a. It stems from life being super stressful. And that that's probably like one of your biggest outlets. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's ah well, at least I'm uh going to see some more. And it's crazy because um we was watching. Remember we was watching AW last night. Okay. And when MJF was cutting this promo, and remember we was kind of dialed out because I was like, what the hell is he talking about with football? So after. Rewatching the promo this morning, I was on the way when you listen to the whole thing. Okay. Cause then it made it made sense. And he was saying like he was giving the backstory on like how he had a ADHD or ADD or something like that. And he was always like an odd kid. He wasn't always rich and this and that. And he was getting bullied and 
And he was like, he had severe depression and this and that. And the only thing that got him out of bed on a Friday was to go see CM Punk. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then, you know, fast forward to this, that's probably like how a lot of people thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, yeah, I ain't, ain't shit going right in life right now, but at least I get to go see Summer Walker and hear these songs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but and, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I about to say like if that person I know it's probably like too much to ask for but like if you if you dealing with something you know what I'm saying you should be able to identify if she's telling you she's dealing with something you know what I'm saying yeah so I understand you should be asking for bullshit you know what I'm saying I know it sucks but like like God damn then you ain't know that motherfucker dealing with some shit you know what I'm saying like and, and that's true that's true too but that is kind of asking like I, I mean that's why I said I just it's a gray area yeah. like I, yeah like I don't. And you know, like you said, you still getting some of Walker, right? You just not getting some of those songs, and I, unless I'm just like, unless I don't went through the exact same shit she went through, and I need to hear those songs. That's the only thing I can really think will make me be like, "Yo, that's crazy." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I feel like she this time is not. That's not bad. Yeah, but that's the thing, though, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why, like, artists and people in general, you got to chill out on the bullshit. So, like, when it's something in question like this comes around, it doesn't look as bad. You know what I'm saying? It's not a whole multitude of bullshit you done did or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Granted, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, she said, this is a good reason. But, you know what I'm saying? Some of this shit get washed away because <laughs> you kind of been on bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, I don't know. That's why, I like, like you got to keep that capital with people. No? And yeah. not fuck up on dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's facts. So when yeah. you need people's sympathy or, for lack of better words, you know what I'm saying? Understanding. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I think she did that. I think she did that, uh, that shit with Drake. Right. That, that kind of was like, Going forward, you better be like perfect at the concerts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we waiting for you for three, four hours, and you riding around the city with this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, <laughs> but yeah. So that that's that's the latest on Summer Walker. Hope hopefully she, you know, she need to work on she need to work on her rapport with the fans, like you said, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause you don't want to. The last thing you want to do is have that that Lauren Hill reputation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And it's like you, you know, she probably is gonna get to a point where Lauren Hill probably couldn't even sell out the cafeteria or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she be duping the shit out of people. Yeah, and one of the most talented people of of the '90s. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. But yeah, so that's that's a a tidbit on her and then also have a, uh, another one before I swing it back to you and this one is about uh, Miss Alabama Zoe who died recently at the age of 27 from suicide jumping from her condo building um, now this is the second time in about a month that one of these models because uh, I think last time it was one of the Miss USA's that jumped out of her building to her death about three four weeks ago and we turn around and it's happening again um, now obviously a lot of people think that you know when it, whenever something happens twice in like a short period of time you know people throw out the conspiracy theories and stuff like that and which 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 you know we can be quite the you know the conspiracy sometimes uh -huh. But I, I really feel like I wish people would stop doing that as much because it provides an easy excuse or a distraction to the fact that, you know, people's minds is really not right right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like for somebody to have like uh two kids, and I think they said one of them is eight months old. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Yeah. And you you just... Remember, I think, remember like a while ago me, you and Fly Guy, we was in a party and we was talking about like people killing themselves 
and was like, it's one thing to kill yourself, but we was talking about how people was like jumping in front of trains and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, it's another thing to like kill yourself that kind of way. Yeah. Like you're like you need to you need to punish yourself on your way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's kind of what I, I look at like this, like jumping out of a window of a building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's just super, super sad. Very beautiful young lady. Got the kids. And you just no matter what the what kind of success you're going through, you just never know what people about, man. What's your feel on this one? Yeah, man. It's super unfortunate, man. Like you said, man. You never know what people are dealing with. That's why, like, I always try to reach out to anybody that I know. You know what I'm saying? If I see something, like, a little bit off what you normally do, I try to reach out just to make sure everything is straight. Mm-hmm. And it's super unfortunate. Rest in peace. Condolences to the family. Yeah, and um, yeah, that was just a tidbit on that. Just shouting her out. So, um, what did you want to get into? Oh man, like we always, oh, uh, we got a few ongoing sagas, and something we've been talking about a lot as recent as NBA Young Boy versus Dirt. <sighs> and, uh, <laughs> they're back at it again, you know. Uh, NBA Youngboy had made like a little diss to the old block and a few other people in the industry, like any little chopper and all that. Um, Dirk was allegedly supposed to come up with a project, but it turned out to be a diss song towards NBA Youngboy called Aha, where he took aim at the rapper, calling him like a rat and all this other stuff, talking about murder, you just came home and all this other stuff like that. And it didn't take Youngboy long. Hours later, firing back, with his own diss track, Hate Young Boy, where he disses um, um, Lil Dirt, Lil Baby, and Gucci Man. Wow. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the boy, Young Boy. Like I said, anybody who's like close to that side, he's like, he's taking shots at him, shit. So, man, <clears throat> this, is, this is a crazy, crazy situation. Well, I, I wish it would kind of end, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, this shit has got violent and, like, Dirk alleged to sliding on ops or whatever, you know what I'm saying, in silence. Mm-hmm. But I guess not silent anymore because you just told us. <laughs> Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But uh, I will say I do like that, though. That's, like, that's some old school shit right there for this trying to come out and, you know what I'm saying, and a rapid response. I, I will say I like that. Yeah, but other than especially that, especially in a timely manner, right? You know what I'm saying? Like these young boys really don't hold too much uh, <laughs> the elements of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was kind of that nigga. That nigga just hold on. Let you know me go. We, let me go. We go. We shoot that nigga in the face, man. You know what? Even though cause I like Gucci, love little baby, and like dirt. It's it's hard to like not acknowledge that cat on the other side got some power, man. You said what? Uh, the young boy. Oh yeah, yeah, he definitely got some power. <laughs> yeah, he got got some power, man. Like I remember we was talking about uh, a little while ago, like how he he don't got no socials or nothing like that, but he be like hit his streaming, he be breaking like the super streaming records and getting the most support and all of this and that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely, 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 and, definitely. It's an entity out here. And when I hear the young people talking, that's that's like the first person that they always bring up is him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they love him. Yeah, yeah. NBA young boy, NBA young boy, NBA young boy. And it's like he's from the outside looking in, he's like in God mode right now. Yeah. Now, I'm you know, little baby Dirk and, and Gucci. That's 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 not like his own. Power entity in itself, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this is this is interesting. I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna check those this songs out because, like you said, that does kind of got like an old school feel. Somebody drop a song and then a couple hours later, niggas retaliating. You know what I mean? Yeah, the little Dirk John definitely sound pretty good. And um, mm. I gotta listen to the what's the name John again? Um, the uh, young boy John. I think I heard like. <laughs> DJ Academics reading the fucking lyrics and that shit itself. So fucking dumb when he reading the fucking lyrics and shit. Cause you know what I'm saying? 
He's reading it like how it's written and shit. You know, people got certain accents and shit. Make sure oh, yeah. it sound a little bit better and shit. Kate is his. Yeah. yeah. So I got to hear his genre shit. But yeah. Oh, like I said, I don't know what it is. I, I wanted to get into it, young boy. Because like you said, like, you got to, I was like, you got to want to check it out if you're just a fan of music. Right. Because like, just like you said, you just see the following and all that shit he has and shit. So I've been it, wanting it, to check it out, but I just haven't had it, Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's hard because it's like, I've tried checking them out, but it's just like eh, maybe this is a young person thing. Yeah, you know. And then and then I just got to factor in like, cause you know, um, around here we have a very popular uh, rapper and Gunu. Okay. And his his style of music is super unorthodox, where he's like offbeat and he whispers a lot. Okay. You know what I'm saying. And it's like I got a couple of songs that I like from him, but I can't listen to him like a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. it's, it's like it's just like damn, you know. Maybe it's just the young person thing. This is what music is, and yeah, I've been just trying to make up a bunch of excuses why I don't like it, and other people do. Like you know, all right, well, maybe you know niggas is off the lean and and damn, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, maybe I got to be off that to appreciate it or something, you know? Yeah, I just say, like, fuck it. Just different strokes for different folks and shit. Because I be yeah. like it's some music for young niggas like your shit. But it's like, I mean, you ain't going to like everything. You know what I'm saying? That's, that just is what it is and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to keep trying to get cuz and, cuz and listen to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It be some songs and shit, like I said, I be listening to streamers. You know what I'm saying? Since he's so popular, you know, he's always... Getting played in the streams and shit. So I'll be like, asking John, oh, I'm sure I'll be all right or whatever. But like, mm-hmm. I got like I said, I probably just gotta just fuck with him one time and just just go through and some shit. Look at a YouTube playlists and some shit, most popular songs and some shit, and start there and shit. <laughs> Best projects and start there and some shit. Facts, super facts. Yeah, that is that is crazy. So I guess we could slide from one NBA to another. And get into this past All Star Weekend. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this saw a couple of new styles of formats for a couple of the All Star activities. Starting with the, do they still call it the Rising Stars, like the rookies and sophomores? Do they still call it that? Uh, yeah, it's still called the Rising Stars. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they do rookies and sophomores now. Because, like, they've been doing, like, the World versus USA and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this time around, they um split the format into four teams. And I, I they're slowly adapting it to, like, what the, uh, what the main All-Star game is like. You know, where you're just kind of playing... Well, no, because they got the foolery attached to it where you got to do obstacles in between, like quarters and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you play you play a quarter of basketball, right? And then at the end of the first quarter, they, they might have, like, a, one of the things from the skills challenge set up, like the passing little obstacles. And whoever gets the most points from the passing obstacles they'll get some crazy type of incentive going into the second quarter. Like, oh, we'll add 10 points to your score, or y'all can play the first three minutes of the second quarter, you know, five on four. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, 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 just all types of foolery going on here, bro. Definitely foolery. <laughs> so, mm. I, after my huge, huge disappointment, and this and the celebrity all star because the cele- celebrity all star game was the same exact way. Play the first quarter, then do some crazy incentive, and you got some type of bonus going into the second quarter, so on and so forth. Did you see any of this? No, I'm so glad I was fucking asleep, bro. Like, I had to work, so I ain't really see none of this shit. Uh, it sounds like I didn't miss anything, but maybe the all star game. Yeah, I, it, it terrible, bro. Terrible. I like the I like the uh, I'm a huge SpongeBob fan, right? Okay. It was this episode where um <clears throat> Mr. Krabs was trying to like draw people into the Krusty Krab or whatever because business was slow. And so he started putting up like TVs in the joint or whatever so people could watch TV while they eat. 
but you had to pay to watch TV while you was eating, right? Mm-hmm. So when one cuz was in the dome and he ain't pay, the nigga had like walk uh SpongeBob had told Mr. Krabs that he ain't pay to watch TV, so he getting free TV. The nigga Mr. Krabs like run out the dome with a remote and he pressed a button and everything cuz watch came back out of his eyes and mind and went back into the TV though. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's what I was thinking of when I was watching this shit. Like, yo, I wish I had that button right now. You know what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, motherfuckers, you did not miss nothing, bro. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> so it takes us to Saturday, and you know we got the skills challenge, which is under a completely different format. This isn't, you know, the top point guards in the game. This isn't like top players in the game. This is they have this set up in teams now. So because we're in Cleveland, we had uh Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and Darius Garland on one team, obviously of the Cavaliers. We had the Antetokounmpo brothers, Giannis, uh his brother that plays for Milwaukee, and then the other brother, I think he's in the G League. On another team, and I forgot who the the other team was, but long story short, oh yeah, it was like some uh rookie sophomore type team put together or whatever. So long story short, you have to do the relay, and whoever finishes it in the shortest amount of time wins. But now we've been watching this stuff for years, right? Mm-hmm. You know how you got to pass the ball through like the little circle thing? Right. And you, you got to keep doing it until you get it in there? Yeah. You didn't even have to do it this time. Like you just had to pass the ball. And if you kept like after like the third miss, niggas just took off running, doing something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know how you got to dribble like around a little fake little cone set up and whatever. Yeah. And then you got to shoot a jump shot. Like and a free you, throw jump tight, right? Right. And you can't, you're not supposed to go on until you make it. Mm-hmm. Like, niggas will miss, like, niggas will miss the free throw twice and then go back down the other end. And it's like, yo, bro, what is what is this? You know oh, yeah, that's a wild. Yeah. And it's like, then, um, it's like set up differently because it's like it's different rounds and you and whoever win the round gets the points. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then it came down to the last thing was worth like 200 points. So you could even if you had zero, you could steal it if you win. You had to hit it. Was It came down to who could hit a half court shot the fastest. <laughs> and the answer to Kumpo niggas was like super trash, but the little rookie team had hit a half court shot in nine seconds. And then it it came down to like, you know, the Cleveland niggas had nine seconds to make one. And then Evan Mobley ended up hitting the zone in three seconds. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah. And so they ended up winning the zone or whatever. And it w- it was just like, bro, this shit was so trash. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah. And then it took us to like the three point contest, which was good, it was decent. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, Carl Anthony Towns ended up winning that, breaking the record in the process because I think he had the highest points that somebody ever gotten in the uh, the final round. Uh, he had 29 in the last round. I don't think nobody ever did that before. Um, and he's beating out like Fred Van Vliet and Luke Kennard, and you know, this couple of other quote unquote shop shooters around the league, you know what I mean? Zach Levine and all of that. So that was decent. But then the dunk contest kind of just like it emphasized like what the weekend was so far. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and this was I was about to say arguably, but there's no argument. This was easily the worst dunk contest of all time. Damn like, shame. Never seen so many missed dunks. And I was I was shocked because I was like, even guys like, you know, Obi Toppin, he ended up winning. But it's like, 
he won on like a technicality. He's the only one like finishing dunks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like nobody else is finishing dunks. Like literally nobody is finishing dunks. <laughs> like what the fuck? And you just thinking the whole time like, bro, did, didn't y'all practice for this? Didn't, didn't niggas like, or did y'all just like say, yeah, I do it when I get there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, niggas out there freestyling. <laughs> yeah, like I, it was just, it was baffling like the whole weekend like I went into Sunday thinking I would have to see one of the greatest all-star games of my life to not say that this all-star weekend was complete trash you know what I'm saying yeah I mean now luckily they gave us one of them don'ts they gave us one of them classic don'ts and it didn't make up for it but it 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 allows you to say, like, all right, well, we know all these niggas different anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, All-Star Game was... <clears throat> definitely was a highlight factory. Um, I had to come out of retirement on YouTube, even do a reaction video to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And Steph Curry, 16 three-pointers, which is crazy. 50 points. He's the All-Star Game MVP. Bro, uh, you, you watch the highlights from this? Nah, I ain't get a chance. I've been meaning to watch your video, but I ain't, I ain't get a chance to watch the uh, highlights of this, John, either. Watch, watch, go, like, House of, House of Hoops or House of Highlights. The NBA page probably got it. Like, go watch a, a just a recap of this game, bro. And me personally, the last like five, ten minutes of the game was crazy, bro. Cause you know, niggas buckled down, both sides trying to win, niggas going back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, it was just like everybody letting everybody go off at first, but niggas was doing all star stuff while niggas was playing hard. It was like super crazy. Like Booker catching the oop with the left hand. Over over Embiid and and you know it seemed like LeBron and them was going to get the, the victory all easily. They was up by like six seven. Then Levine come down and get a dunk and then he steal it and he come down and drain like a three and now they just down by one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all, all leading to like LeBron doing a little super fadeaway, Jordan fadeaway dunk. Yeah, dunk was like that. That was like a spectacle in itself and shit. All right. Yeah, but that that sums up the All Star Weekend. So, I, like you said, the only thing you really missed is the, is the actual game. All that other stuff could have easily not been seen. Yeah, that's crazy, man. They gotta get, they gotta do something better. Get all that bullshit out the way, and come over some better content, bro. Like, gotta get some better dunkers in the dunk contest. Like you said, the three point contest was all right. Uh, I don't know what you could do. Uh, the rising star jump was all right. Just go back to rookies versus sophomores or some shit. I don't yeah, know. yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like, like there's nothing. I didn't feel like I, I was like not even the against the whole USA versus the world thing. Yeah, like that's that can be pretty decent if you got some some Luca X players coming in. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, if it's if it's slow with the foreigners that year, then just go back to rookies and sophomores regular. Right. But yeah, I get it. They try to be innovative and 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 do stuff, but I, it definitely was a fail. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, that that about sums up the NBA. Did you want to touch on anything about that? Uh, nah. That's all I got for the NBA and shit. Okay. Um. So what else you got? I think that's about it. Uh, old um, Jawan Howard, Michigan, Wisconsin scuffle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. I was like, I was like, what the hell going on? I, you know, what I'm saying like, cause like I go to sleep so damn early, I miss a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. So I seen like woke up to headlines about you know, what I'm saying Jawan Howard, and then I'm just in the break room. You know what I'm saying? Chilling, I see this shit on ESPN. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> like, I seen like a little bit of it when I walked in. It was a little like goddamn 
Malice in the Palace type shit. Like a <laughs> bunch of motherfuckers and shit. And then I go back to see, I guess, like, Wisconsin was winning. And I guess they was doing, like, little dumb shit at the end of the game, taking timeouts when they ain't need to. And mm-hmm. up by, like, what, seven or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And um, when the coaches met, the dude made contact with Jawan Howard and shit. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, dog, no, don't fucking touch me. You know what I'm saying? All right. And, like, he trying to, like, get Jawan Howard a stern talking to him. And, you know, that's not going to go good for anybody in the black culture, and especially someone like Jawan Howard ain't on the bullshit. All right. All right. <laughs> it, it's, it's crazy because it's like when this happened, I had got on Twitter to try to research it. <clears throat> and the first meme that I seen was like, Jawan Howard should have been smacking Chris Webber like that. If he was getting mad, if he was to get mad time out, it should have been that junk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, it's just like, yo, no matter what happens, Twitter just gonna have jokes for you. you know? Yeah, niggas gotta get their shit off, man. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like you said, you just knew that like he, he's not one of those guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't know what the assistant was thinking on the other team. But I guarantee you one thing. He's not going to do that type of thing anymore. Um, I, no, I wouldn't say it was warranted to, to smack him. But I get it. you frustrated. Yeah, you're having an up and down season. Um, it's almost tournament time. Every win is going to matter from here on out. Um, he got suspended, right? Yeah, I think the rest of the season was just like five games. Okay, yeah, so... If they they able to make the tournament, which I don't see why they wouldn't, unless they just probably lose out or get punished or something like that, <clears throat> then you could just focus on the tournament. You know what I mean? Um, I don't condone smacking people, but I guess you can't tell people how to react to things that they don't like. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's one thing I learned, and I kind of like. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you can't tell somebody else how to react. <laughs> you can control what the fuck you do, but you can't, you know what I'm saying, can't control other people and shit. So just watch what you do. Mm-hmm. And hopefully people act accordingly. Facts. Yeah. So uh, we'll see going forward. <clears throat> First game back or something. We'll see how you act. You know what I'm saying? Um, was that it on that situation? Yeah, I think that's all the talk was like, yeah, this kind of recent or whatever. Gotcha. Guy, I got one little, one little small tidbit. <clears throat> um, anybody that grew up in the nineties that watched cartoons was probably an Arthur fan. You watched Arthur when you was younger? Hell yeah, that was my guy, man. Yeah, so childhood favorite Arthur is coming in after a twenty-five year run. Didn't even know Arthur was still making episodes. Me neither, bro. <laughs> the last the last new episode in this past week in which it foreshadowed 25 years down the line in which the all the friends were meeting up to get lunch and they showcased like new looks, how they would look down the line and all of that as the the end to an incredible run. Damn, bro. I did not know Arthur was making new episodes, and that's crazy that he lasted this long. Right. I did. I did. It didn't hit me, but I guess I should have known when they had that whole fiasco about Mr. Ratburn being gay or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know that. I, but you know how like they retro, retroactive do shit now, so I don't know if they were saying he was gay or along with some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How they just be changing shit. And that was that was like a few years ago. So yeah, right, right, right. Okay. So yeah, it, it's it's crazy that we we living in some like crazy times, bro. Like good mm-hmm. and bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like we're seeing whether it's sports with like LeBron and Tom Brady and Jordan and them. Or like just little stuff like this, like cop, like these classic cartoons that's lasted for for twenty five, thirty years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, just greatness because they damn sure don't make cartoons like this now. Mm-hmm. At least I don't, I don't think so. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah but I, said, I can't really get into today's cartoons. So when I did with the regular show, they canceled that junk kind of rather quickly, I think. But I, like I said, I haven't gotten into the these new cartoons. Hmm. I, I think I think nowadays it's like it's too many politics that go into everything. <clears throat> like you can't just come out with something like education to put it on cable and let it thrive. Like now you gotta worry about the streaming stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like okay, we we can't compete with this stream, so we gotta cancel this show and all that. And yeah, it, it's probably a lot more BS that goes into it, but. Great run by Arthur, nonetheless. And um, that is all I have on topics myself. So you want to get into the what the F facts, or you want to do the the hit thing first, or what? Oh, we can do the facts first. All right. <clears throat> um. So my what the F fact is I got to scroll past the songs because I had that queued up <clears throat> okay here we go so mine is about uh metal right so you know how in order to like fuse metal we need like the welded mm-hmm. yeah so did you know when well, well, not just you but y'all listening did you no. know that in space you don't need heat for metal to weld together. Wow. <laughs> so because of the lack of uh <clears throat> the, the lack of atmosphere in space, things tend to normally stick and weld together quite naturally. So if you took two pieces of metal and just rubbed them together in space, they will automatically weld together. That's crazy. <laughs> and on Earth, we got to go through all this. You got you to put the little face mask on, get the blowtorch and all that. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, bullshit. <laughs> and, <laughs> right, right. And then in space, all you got to do is like... That's my what the F act for today. All right. I got a, a little slight giant. Mm-hmm. Oh man, the the long age debate. Does pineapples go on pizza? Yes. You say yes. Yes. You said that quick. I think you. I want to say you had this conversation like on your Facebook or some shit recently, all right? Uh, about a year ago. A year, or something. A year ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know what that pizza's called, right? Hawaii. Hawaiian pizza. What if I was to tell you that that pizza was not created in Hawaii? <laughs> that pizza was created by a cook in Toronto, Canadian chef, <laughs> who put ham, pineapples on a pizza, and it just got called the Hawaiian pizza because of the canned pineapples he used. <laughs> I know like, he, I, I know hate he, shit like this, but like your life is just it's been a lie. <laughs> I know he was sick. <laughs> he was sick because he stole his credit and all that though. Yeah, 1962, this was in <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say this shit came from Why you smell the fuck wrong with y'all, man? This came from the six, <laughs> 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 He probably, he probably, hey, y'all do know pineapples growing in other places than Hawaii, right? Right. Like, 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 <laughs> hey, shit. Yeah, I did not know that. that yeah, I know he was sick. I know. Yeah. He, <laughs> nah, that's good right there. I did not know that. You, you, you would start an argument because I ninety percent of people just saying it don't go on pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I fuck with it. You fuck with it. Hawaiian pizza? Yeah. I, I can eat it, but it's nothing I probably would order. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, I think I had, like, way back in the day. And it's not really my cup of tea. Because, like, I don't know. I don't like hot pineapples and shit. I like my, my fruit generally cold. Okay. If not, at least room temperature. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But, yeah, you get a hot, fresh pizza. But it's straight, though. Like you said, nothing I would order, though. Yeah, it ain't... It ain't... It, it, niggas be acting like it's just a cardinal sin. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah, they got bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. It's, it's, it's eatable. It's edible. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, come on. You like pineapples, you like pizza. Like you said, it would have to be something like what you said. Like, you just don't like your pineapples not cold. You know what yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I I know from working at GW, that's what that was one of their go to pizzas all the time. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, this ain't this ain't bad. No. But yeah, that that's that's good right there. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I I, to the music, man. This has become like one of my favorite parts of the fucking the pod, I love this shit. <laughs> Hand me it's down. Like having fun doing the uh, facts and shit. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Hand me down hits, <laughs> where we discuss hit songs that belong to others, but were either passed on or I guess some type of technicality forced uh, one artist to miss out on it, and another artist got it and thrived with it. So, um, I got a few today, actually. Okay, cool. I got two. <clears throat> all right. So, um, mine's will all stem from Jay Z. So you can tell I you can tell I specifically researched this. So one of Jay Z's biggest hits, um, back in the day was "Heart of the City." We're all familiar with that. But did you know that it wasn't originally made for Jay Z? This song was created by Kanye West for DMX. Mm. After coming to DMX with this concept about Heart of the City with the beat and the consent, he said the consensus idea of the song, but was still was going to give DMX free range, obviously because of who he was. <laughs> DMX declined. Um and with Jay Z, he says after the meeting, he kind of they kind of was you know they just was like talking on you know talking or whatever, and he kind of had throughout there he did a song for DMX and DMX turned it down or whatever, so he don't know what he gonna do with like the beat or whatever. He said Jay asked to hear it, and the rest was history. <laughs> 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 Ain't no love in the heart of the city. Could you imagine hearing DMX on that one? Uh, I probably could. You know what I'm saying? I probably won't be mad at it. I know I know he probably did something crazy with it if he was inspired. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I ain't mad at Jay Z got it though. It's one of my favorite whole songs. Yeah, that's that's that's. I feel like that would have been that would have been a win win situation right there. Um, the next one, which is still with Jay Z, is Joe Button smash hit "Pump It Up." Oh yeah, I know this one. Yeah, so Just Blaze specifically made this beat with Jay Z in mind. He said, however, after discussing it with Jay, he turned it down, in which the song was get, given to in the possession of Joe Button, who went on to make that one of his smash hits. So, ah. Obviously, we could say we we could hear Jay Z on it because he did do his own version when they stopped beefing. You know, right? What That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So you know, we 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 did get a taste of what it would have been like. You know, what I'm saying, um, which is which to this day is still one of the most underrated back and forths. I feel like in hip hop history <laughs> because Joe Button talking to Jay Z. I, I was such a huge fan of the wordplay that they were using when they were including like foreign NBA stars and all of that. <laughs> like I, I, I was like, yo, these niggas is crazy. <laughs> like, like, yo, the, the way these niggas talking to each other, like so casually, but like, yo, this is wow. Like this is a beat right here. That nigga, that nigga Joe Button still mad. He called him Sean Bradley. And shit. <laughs> he's, still, he's still mad about that shit, bro. <laughs> yo, that, that, Give me that. Bring that hip hop back, please. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah that 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 was that was amazing. So, um, I got two more, right? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, 
we all familiar with the artist, rest, God rest his soul, Black Rob, whose biggest song of his career was Woe. Um, however, this song was constructed for Jay Z. Damn, ho. <laughs> um, the only snag and why this didn't get done is because Jay Z was in the groove with his music career. You know, this is around the time that he was gearing up for a uh, blueprint and whatnot. He felt like he was in his own zone and he wanted to create all his own music from his natural from his natural mindset and not take on any other songs from any other artists or whatever. And you know, this is also around the time where he was writing for like Dr. Dre and them as well. Okay. So he felt like he was in too good of a groove. You're in too good of a groove to accept a smash hit, even though he was dropping his own. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Could you imagine Jay Z on what? I would love to hear it, man. <laughs> that, 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 that was that's like a classic song, man. I mm-hmm. still, I still will fucking bump whoa and shit. Man. <laughs> that shit was that shit was hard. Uh-huh. Jay Z, you know what I'm saying? What he can do with it. Mm-hmm. And my last one. This this was crazy because I this is like. I'm I'm like a huge Jay Z fan, and this is me learning something new. One of Jay Z's biggest hits of his entire career is from the Blueprint, "Girls, Girls, Girls." Okay, smash hit, right? Uh huh. But this hit had to find his way to him because this beat and the consensus of the hook was made for Wu-Tang Clan member Ghostface Killer. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> and this was around the time where he was kind of like still in the game and he was doing his thing as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, got wind of the, uh, the beat in the song. Almost accepted it, but at the last minute declined to do so. Um, After the beat had floated around Jay-Z heard it and we know what happened with that (laughs) classic super classic that's that's like a that's that was anthem status yeah (laughs) like that was one of his songs that was always on the fucking radio but yeah, how you feel about that right there? Ghostface Killer, I feel like my bad. He I feel like he could have pulled this song off, actually. How you feel? I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't too familiar with Wu Tang and Ghostface like that. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know how he yeah, I'll definitely take your word for it. But like another one, like I'm gonna have you hold got it. <laughs> <I ain't> <laughs> yeah. That's that's Heart of the City and um Girls, Girls, Girls. Two of his biggest hits almost wasn't his. Right. But uh that is it for me and my Jay-Z obsession. So hand it over to you, my good sir. All right. I said I had two, but since you had four, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back with at least one more and shit. Okay. So I'm gonna start off with one. I, I started to include, you know what I'm saying? But it was like it's kind of similar to my other one, so I didn't include it. Mm-hmm. And I don't have as a live backstory on that one like I got on this or the other two, but the hit hit me, baby, one more time. Mm-hmm. Big hit breakout hit for Britney Spears was shopped around to the Backstreet Boys and female group TLC, and uh, TLC didn't take it because you know it's in the whole woman empowerment mm-hmm. um, movement they was on. They didn't feel like. Um, a song called Hit Me Baby One More Time will resonate with their message and shit. But the funny thing about that shit is T-Boss, she recognized it was going to be a hit. So it's like, why didn't you just like tweak it a little bit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I would have I, I would have taken the hit and just would have had to explain later. Like, no, we're not talking about that kind of hit. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. And, <clears throat> and if you were, I guess, maybe talk with the, the songwriters a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Because the songwriters, I think they were for like from the UK and shit. You know, the language barriers and shit. Okay. So what they meant was like, hit me up. Like, call me. Not like actually hit me. So, you know what I'm saying? The language barrier fucked up the meaning of the song. But like, if you'd have talked to him, you could have got a smash hit right there, and y'all, y'all bullshit, y'all yeah, the ball. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, well, if that if that's the case, then you know, obviously we done heard the "Hit Me Baby" one more time, a hundred times, so it resonates in our mind. But yeah, "Call Me Baby" wouldn't have been bad. Yeah, some of that, day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever slang niggas is using back then, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they 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 bullshit with that joke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <sighs> and it, it, especially like when you see like the TLC documentary and how they was already getting robbed and stuff like that, right? I, mean, I wouldn't have turned down nothing. Mm, yeah, it's a few people. Maybe I gotta like find some more videos and research some way to find the songs and shit. Because I'm like, I said, the videos I be watching, it'd be a few mainstays on that damn list. You know what I'm saying? Like some people who are super fortunate. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I see why they might miss some songs like the Rihanna's, the Beyonces, right? And shit like that. But like they like I talked about the Leona Lewis, the uh, Nicole Schwarzenegger, the the chick from the uh, Pussycat Dolls, yeah, and um, TLC is like a mainstay. And like the the last three I named, like people probably could have really benefited from some of these hits if they right. really fucking sat down and like you know what I'm saying and right. went through the shit better and shit because like they didn't have, in my opinion. The best music career they could have had. I know TLC got messed up because they lost a member of Left Eye. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. But like, still, they could have still probably been a little bit more monumental, even though they're like a mainstay in our culture and shit. You know what I'm saying? We we still love TLC. Of course, right. Uh, but moving along, mm-hmm. uh, damn, I don't know which one I want to do because both of these just I kind of fuck with. We do both of them. No, I'm talking about which one I want to do next. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay. okay, all right. <clears throat> I had heard about this earlier, like, not, not earlier, but, like, years ago and shit. You know what I'm saying? About, like, listening to the interviews and shit. Mm-hmm. The smash, smash hit. 11 times platinum. You know what I'm saying? A mainstay in, like, every sad compilation video. The song, See You Again. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm. By Wiz Khalifa. So, I heard, like, some real interesting things about this song. Um, I don't know what happened first. Like, okay, so I'm hearing like artists, Fifty Cent and yep. Eminem had it, mm-hmm. but they didn't want to do it because they were working on that Southpaw movie and soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So they let it go. And I think maybe after that, because I'm just thinking the ranking of celebrities, Wale had the chance to have it. Oh, he okay. said he couldn't write to it because it was too sad. So he Tripping. passed on it. Tripping. Tripping. Yeah. And he's like a sad motherfucker, but. All right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then I guess maybe Fast and Furious purchased it. Right. Because I'm hearing Wiz Khalifa <clears throat> story of how he got on it is it was, I guess it was supposed to be some type of compilation type track. Or maybe that was the process. Maybe they was, because he said like when I guess the Fast and, people, Fast and Furious people shopped it to him. It's supposed to be like 11 motherfuckers on this track or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. okay. And they only asked him for a verse. But I guess after hearing his verse, I was like, nah, this is yours, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, Wiz got wind of it and like, he was like, oh, they they trying to like really do something big with this. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. they kept coming back to him like, okay, we like your first verse, this part, we like your second verse, this part, and just do this. He was like, so whatever they asked, I, I was had to make myself ready, available to switch or whatever, because I, I felt this was about to be kind of big. He didn't know it was going to be this monumental, you know what I'm saying, 11 times platinum. Right. But he was like, I had to make myself available, you know what I'm saying, for whatever tweaks and, and changes they want. But I, and I heard the Wale shit like a while back, but I didn't know 50 mm. and M had a shot at it. Yeah, I, I, I read that, and it's funny because like, like pieces of what I read, it matched up to like pieces of the stuff you were saying too. So I read that Eminem and 50 Cent had it first as well. <clears throat> and they kind of like didn't want to do it. But now you feel they didn't know why because they was working on something else. And I didn't hear about the part where it's supposed to be like a lot of people on it. 
So I I did read one time that they were super impressed with uh Wiz Khalifa's verse or whatever. Cause mm-hmm. I think it had gotten to the point where they was gonna let Wichicom just do the song by itself. What's his name? Charlie Puth. Yeah, that's the singer on it. Yeah. Right. So they they would I think they were gonna come down to a, a settlement where they were just like, all right, well, we're just gonna let him rock out on the song by itself. But they they were so impressed with Wiz Khalifa that they had went back and asked him to do more about it. And that's kind of what you just said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so yeah, I definitely read about that. So Man, it, I really felt that really changed like Wiz Khalifa's career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I about to say, he was just catching Jones at that time. You know what I'm saying? Catching anthems like with the black and yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, that Jones. I think he had one other anthem. Oh, We Them Boys. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, and it, then, it's like, what? And, and I was like, and then you had the smash hit that hits like through multiple cultures. Right. <clears throat> you that, know what that's I'm saying? Gonna be, yeah, that's going to be. Life changer. Yeah, that's gonna be um what's the word I'm looking for for that that, that song. It it just took off beyond it's gonna live for generations. Oh yeah, that's gonna, oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, song, that song's not going nowhere. Right, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that song is not yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's gonna be one of the ones his, and shit. His, his verse and the way Charlie Poop singing, but yeah, that yeah. beat <laughs> that John John like almost kind of tune up the motherfucking tears like every time you hear that shit, man. Yeah, and then at the at the time with Paul Walker dying, right? Like, yeah, that was a that was a perfect storm in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that would have that would have changed Wale. That would have changed everybody's complete imagination of Wale more than likely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Like, boy, you gotta like you I don't know, you kinda gotta kick yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you you know how we uh we've been discussing like how we go over some of these songs and you'll be like, um well it's hard to it's hard to imagine if that was a hit if we just hearing the beat and stuff like that. Right. It, it's no facet of the imagination where they brought any piece of this song to you and you didn't think this was going to be a hit. Okay. Yeah. At least at least with this song. Right. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they could have played the beginning, like the intro. Oh yeah, this going to be serious. Like with me, if I hear a piano, I'm more than likely going to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like like you said, "Hold on, who? This Charlie Puth on the hook?" Oh yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a fuck with y'all. All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It and then and I hate to bring like race into it, but it's it's the white people coming to you, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know they gonna push that shit. You know Hollywood gonna push that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and I didn't even know it was eleven times platinum. I knew it was like multi platinum, but eleven is just crazy. You know, like yeah, yeah. That's that's. That's diamond in an extra drink. <laughs> yeah, like you, you, that's that's generational wealth right there. Off one song, right? <laughs> um, like I said, he he got a few other jobs, not as big as that, but you know what I'm saying. He does well for himself. I think he might be kind of. He's good. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's good. Wait, wait, hey, wait. We damn near ain't heard a weird sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's what I was just about to allude to. It's like. I'm happy for him and shit. Cause, like he's such a good guy. Like mm-hmm. I used to watch like his little vlogs and shit back in the day and shit, and just seeing how he came up, like working like college parties and shit like that. I used to love that old raw Wiz music and shit, the, right? The Stoner shit. Paper but he still kind of do that now, but it's more commercialized now because like he's he's a fucking star now and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, right. You, you catching shit like that, you know what I'm saying? I can't be mad at you not making. Uh, the burn out the rolling mixtapes and mm-hmm. the cabin fevers and shit. You know what I'm saying? The cushion orange juice and shit. Right. right. You, you out of here now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah, well deserved. So, super, super cool dude, bro. Like, yeah. Couldn't happen yeah. to a better person. Facts. Love it. All right. So, I'm a, uh, in the midst of the talking about that, John, that John made me remember another one. So, I'm going to give a slight tidbit and then I'm going to get onto my last hit. Mm hmm. Um, song hit song back in the day from the Pussycat Dogs, don't you? Okay. That was originally shopped to 
Paris Hilton. And she turned it down because, like, how we alluded, her the super early version she claims and wasn't what she the song is now. So that's why she turned it down. <laughs> but that might have been like that might have been like a little dope though, you know what I'm saying? Because Paris was kind of hot back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like a brand and shit. Yeah, and for her to come out with a song and shit, that y'all probably could have did some numbers and shit. Cause you know what I'm saying. So let me ask you a question, right? <clears throat> okay. So do you think? Do you think some of these artists be kind of like lying when they? Because a lot of artists say say that though. I mean, they sound like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you think it's just like them saving face now? Like oh, some yeah. of them might be, but like I think it's like fifty fifty. I'll say fifty fifty. Yeah, I was gonna say I I, I get. <laughs> Cause like sometimes you can't hear some of these reference tracks and shit on like you know they they leak online and shit you know what I'm saying right I ain't like come on that's a, that's a hit now yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would have been that would have been fire um Pussycat Dolls definitely like came out roaring with you know well as far as like that album anyway with that song you know what I'm saying yeah um like you said Paris Hilton was not, like fire at that time. Let's see what it did. Good, did numbers with it. I mean, see, I, you know, I guess it's different for her. She's one of those people who's like, it ain't going, it ain't hurt her career. Right. You know what I'm saying? She ain't missing hits or nothing like that. Right. She, only, she ain't need no artists and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that brings me to my question and shit. Like, your mm-hmm. memory might be a little bit better than I, uh, than me as far as like timelines and shit. Would she have been ahead of the curve for like influencers jumping into music? Yep. That's yeah. what I was thinking too. Yeah, without question. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, she could, yeah, that shit could have been something. And then like, you know what I'm saying? You catch one, that's a big hit. Like I said, and then I think that was like model perfect for her. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause she was like a little, you know what I'm saying, a little sexy John or whatever. And then that song is provocative or whatever. Yep. So that that'd have been like that'd have been a that'd have been a home run. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And then it, you know she they got other writers to write for her if she, if she wanted to stay in music and shit. Right, right. Yep, easy. That would have been easy money. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like that should just sell itself. Like you take your your internet fame or whatever you got. You know what I'm saying, and bring that shit. And niggas buy records and shit. Yeah, you'd have been out of there. Mm-hmm. All right, my last one's. It's a little bit sad. Okay. Sort of, sort of. But the smash hit, "Nothing on You," written by Bruno Mars. Was originally made for Lupe Fiasco. Oh man, yeah, you can actually hear this online. Lupe actually, you know, what I'm saying I don't know if somebody leaked it, but it's it's up on YouTube right now. Mm-hmm. And um, what had happened was Lupe, you know, what I'm saying cut the track. Guess he uh, took it to Atlantic. Atlantic head person did not like the song. Mm. Did not like Lupe's version of it, and the producer. Who also, um, I think, signed Bob Bob. He okay. lobbied for them to give Bob Bob the song and shit. So that's how Bob ended up with nothing on you. But the sad part is, you know what I'm saying? That rejection. I don't know how harsh what was said in it. That has said to make Lupe kind of suicidal with that at that time period and shit. Mm. <clears throat> Lost a hit song. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, or you know, he had like I don't know if you know, but he had like this whole little stint and hate, you know, what I'm saying relationship with Atlantic Records back in the day and shit. You know, him not putting out records and mm-hmm. albums and shit like that. That could have probably been the, the start of that shit. Facts. And that is, that is that is sad because it's like, you know, you're not even passing up on a hit. Niggas not like stripping you of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And passing it on to somebody else, so. Yeah, loop, <clears throat> and it's it just it is it's just sad because it's like you get in these deals, and I know the labels probably telling you what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Then you sign those papers, and then niggas just change up on you and shit like that. And I feel like he's just one of them people. That, like he got hits, but I don't feel like his career was what it should have been. But it's not his fault, though. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <clears throat> Super talented brother. But the label made 
they be they be fucking niggas over, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's all about what this person' opinion is and shit. And um, and uh, I actually listened to his uh his version. His version isn't is is it, straight. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, of course, like it's gonna be a little rough because, like you said, this it wasn't the final production. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, right. The John, the John was straight though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like it had a different feel to it, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like Bob John was more pop. This John just seemed like more warm and more. Uh, I forgot the word. And it's like funny because I was like, that's what I was thinking. I was seeing somebody write it in the comments on the video. I wanted to put the shit to get it, but I don't want the video to play and fuck up the podcast. But yeah, it just felt mm-hmm. like more warm and more. Uh, more realistic and shit. And it's just what well, just didn't have the poppy feel to it and shit. John was straight though. You know what I'm saying? He always spitting. So, you know, he's a lyricist. So he's always coming with that. And John was straight though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, it just felt like a rough draft. You know what I'm saying? But right. Not, John was straight. Yeah. He's super talented. So, you know, he he's going to be, he's like solid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well, probably one of the most underrated artists of all time. Yeah, really feel, really feel sorry for those type of artists. Um, yeah. So that's it. Yeah, that's 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 it. That's all yeah, I great, know. excellent segment. That's an ex- excellent. This is fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how I say I like this <laughs> shit. This shit is fun, bro. You did great. Oh yeah, you did too. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, it. I got uh, I got a couple more. I'm gonna tell you off air for you know for the next part because I I just stuck today with this Jay Z. Oh, okay, that, man. That, I got to uh, load it up and get some okay. more. Uh huh. But uh, this has been another hit for the podcast, and um, we out. Bye.